we delve into a harrowing and tragic story that shocked a small, close-knit community and left a lasting scar on everyone involved. This is the brutal murder of Elizabeth Olton, a nine-year-old girl whose life was cruelly taken by her teenage neighbor in a chilling and senseless act. Elizabeth lived in St. Martin's, Missouri, a peaceful town where everyone knew each other. Her disappearance and subsequent murder shattered the sense of safety and trust that bound this community together. In this video, we will take you through the timeline of events that led to this unthinkable crime. We'll explore Elizabeth's background, the night she disappeared, and the frantic search that ensued. We'll delve into the disturbing details of the investigation that revealed a dark and twisted motive behind this heinous act. We'll also look at the trial of Alyssa Bustamante, the teenage neighbor who confessed to the crime and the legal battles that followed. Most importantly, we'll examine the impact this tragedy had on Elizabeth's family and the community of St. Martin's, who have worked tirelessly to ensure her memory lives on. Join us as we uncover the details of this heartbreaking case and explore the impact it had on the community, the investigation that followed, and the quest for justice. Stay with us and let's honor Elizabeth's memory by understanding the full story of her life and the tragic events that took it away. Elizabeth Olton was more than just a name in the headlines. She was a beloved daughter, sister, and friend. Born on December 15, 1999, Elizabeth grew up in the quiet town of St. Martin's, Missouri. Her family and friends described her as a bright and cheerful nine-year-old with an infectious smile that could light up any room. From a young age, Elizabeth loved the simple joys of childhood. She spent her days playing outside, riding her bike, and exploring her neighborhood with friends. She was known for her kind heart, always eager to help others and make new friends. Her laughter was a common sound in her home and community. Elizabeth was a student at Pioneer Trail Elementary School, where she was adored by her teachers and classmates. She had a curious mind and a love for learning, often excelling in her studies. Her favorite subjects were reading and art where she could express her creativity and imagination. But above all, Elizabeth cherished her family. She had a close bond with her mother, Patty, and her older siblings. They would often spend their evenings together, sharing stories and laughter. Elizabeth's family was her world, and she was the center of theirs. In the days leading up to her disappearance, Elizabeth was excited about the upcoming Halloween festivities. She had chosen her costume and was eagerly looking forward to trick or treating with her friends. Little did anyone know that these would be her last days filled with innocent joy and anticipation. Elizabeth's bright spirit and loving nature made her loss all the more devastating for those who knew her. As we continue to unravel the story of her tragic end, it's important to remember Elizabeth, not just as a victim, but as a vibrant young girl whose life touched many. On the evening of October 21st, 2009, Elizabeth Olton was full of excitement as she prepared to visit her friend, a neighbor who lived just a few houses down. It was a typical Wednesday, and Elizabeth's mother, Patty, had given her permission to play outside for a while before dinner. The sky was beginning to darken, and the air had that crisp autumn chill. As Elizabeth left her house around 5 p.m., she waved goodbye to her mother, who reminded her to be back home by 6 p.m. sharp. Elizabeth skipped down the street, her laughter echoing through the quiet neighborhood. She had done this many times before. It was a familiar and safe route, just a short walk through the woods to her friend's house. Time passed quickly, and soon it was 6.15 p.m. Patty began to worry. Elizabeth was always punctual, and it was unlike her to be late without a good reason. 
Patty's concern grew with each passing minute. She decided to call the friend's house, but to her dismay, Elizabeth wasn't there. Her friend mentioned that Elizabeth had left a while ago to head back home. Panic set in as Patty realized something was terribly wrong. She immediately began searching the neighborhood, calling out Elizabeth's name. As the minutes turned into an hour, Patty's anxiety escalated. She knocked on neighbors' doors, hoping someone had seen her daughter, but no one had. By 7 p.m., it was clear that Elizabeth was missing. Patty called the police, and within minutes, officers arrived to help with the search. The once peaceful neighborhood was now buzzing with activity as search parties formed and flashlights flickered in the growing darkness. Neighbors joined the search, combing through the woods and surrounding areas. Elizabeth's family was frantic, their voices echoing through the night as they called out for her. The search continued well into the night, with police, volunteers, and even search dogs scouring every inch of the area. Despite their exhaustive efforts, there was no sign of Elizabeth. The night was filled with a sense of dread and helplessness. As dawn approached, the community feared the worst. Elizabeth Olton, the cheerful and loving nine-year-old, had vanished without a trace. And the search for her had only just begun. As night fell on October 21st, 2009, the urgency of the search for Elizabeth Olton intensified. Friends, neighbors, and police officers formed search parties, scouring the woods and fields surrounding the quiet neighborhood. Flashlights pierced the darkness, and the sound of people calling out Elizabeth's name echoed through the trees. The local police quickly mobilized additional resources, including search dogs and helicopters equipped with thermal imaging. The normally serene community was now a hive of activity, filled with worry and determination. Despite the cold autumn night, no one was willing to give up the search for Elizabeth. Elizabeth's family was at the heart of the search their faces etched with worry and exhaustion. Patty Olton, Elizabeth's mother, was relentless, refusing to leave the search site even for a moment. Her hopes rose and fell with each passing hour, clinging to the possibility that her daughter would be found safe. As the hours turned into days, the community's resolve only strengthened. Volunteers continued to pour in offering their time and support. The search area expanded, covering every possible place Elizabeth could have wandered off to or been taken. Despite the relentless efforts and the extensive search operation, there was still no sign of Elizabeth. The community was gripped by a collective fear, each passing moment bringing a deeper sense of dread. As the second night approached, the hope of finding Elizabeth alive began to wane. But the search continued with unwavering determination. After two days of exhaustive searching, the heart-wrenching reality set in. On October 23, 2009, searchers discovered Elizabeth Olton's body in a shallow grave, hidden deep in the woods, not far from her home. The discovery was made by a search team led by law enforcement officers who had followed a trail of disturbed earth and broken branches. The news of the discovery spread rapidly through the community, plunging everyone into profound grief and shock. Elizabeth's family was devastated, their worst fears confirmed in the most heartbreaking way. The community, once filled with hope and determination, was now united in sorrow. Elizabeth's body showed signs of a brutal and violent attack. It was clear that she had suffered immensely in her final moments. The innocence and joy that had once defined her life were violently stripped away, replaced by a grim and horrifying reality. As investigators processed the crime scene, 
they began piecing together the chilling details of what had happened. The discovery of Elizabeth's body marked the beginning of a new phase in the investigation, one that would soon uncover a disturbing and unthinkable truth. The investigation soon led to a shocking and unexpected suspect, Alyssa Bustamante, a 15-year-old girl who lived nearby. Alyssa was known to have a troubled background, marked by a history of mental health issues and a fascination with death. Her diaries, later revealed in court, contained disturbing entries that detailed her dark thoughts and desires. Alyssa's behavior had raised suspicions among those who knew her. She was described as a loner, someone who struggled to fit in with her peers. Despite these red flags, no one could have predicted the extent of her violent tendencies or the horrific crime she would commit. In her confession to the police, Alyssa described in chilling detail how she had planned and executed Elizabeth's murder. She admitted to luring Elizabeth into the woods, attacking her with a knife, and then burying her body in a shallow grave. Alyssa's motive was shockingly simple and terrifying. She wanted to know what it felt like to kill someone. The community was stunned. The realization that a teenager could commit such a heinous act against an innocent child was incomprehensible. The revelation of Alyssa's dark and twisted mind added a new layer of horror to an already devastating tragedy. Alyssa Bostamante's confession to the murder of Elizabeth Olton was as chilling as it was detailed. In a calm and emotionless manner, Alyssa described how she had meticulously planned the murder. She had chosen her victim, prepared the murder site in advance, and then lured Elizabeth into the woods with the promise of fun and adventure. Once they were deep in the woods, Alyssa attacked Elizabeth with a knife, inflicting fatal injuries. She then covered Elizabeth's lifeless body with leaves and dirt, concealing the shallow grave. Alyssa's diary, which was later presented as evidence, contained entries that vividly described her anticipation and excitement leading up to the murder. In one entry, she wrote about how killing Elizabeth had given her a high and how she had enjoyed the feeling of power and control. The details of Alyssa's confession were difficult to comprehend. The cold and calculated nature of her actions revealed a deeply disturbed individual. Her lack of remorse and the casual manner in which she spoke about the murder left everyone involved in the case deeply unsettled. As Alyssa's confession unfolded, it became clear that this was not a crime of passion or impulse, but a premeditated and deliberate act. The community, already reeling from the loss of Elizabeth, now had to grapple with the horrifying reality of Alyssa Bustamante's dark and twisted mind. In 2012, Alyssa Bostamante stood trial for the murder of Elizabeth Olton. The courtroom was filled with tension and emotion as the prosecution presented its case. The evidence against Alyssa was overwhelming, including her detailed confession and the disturbing entries from her diary. Elizabeth's family was present throughout the trial, their faces etched with grief and determination. They listened as witnesses described the brutal details of Elizabeth's final moments and Alyssa's chilling premeditation. The prosecution argued that Alyssa was fully aware of her actions and should be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. The defense, on the other hand, attempted to highlight Alyssa's troubled past and mental health issues arguing that she was not in full control of her actions. They portrayed her as a deeply disturbed teenager who needed help more than punishment. Despite the defense's efforts, the jury was unmoved. The sheer brutality of the crime and Alyssa's lack of remorse were impossible to overlook. After a deliberation, Alyssa Bostamante was found guilty of first-degree murder 
and armed criminal action. In a final act of justice, Alyssa was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole. While this sentence provided some measure of closure, the community remained haunted by the senseless loss of Elizabeth Olton and the dark mind of her killer. The murder of Elizabeth Olton left an indelible mark on the St. Martin's community. The sense of safety and trust that once characterized this tight-knit town was shattered. Parents became more vigilant, and the innocence of childhood seemed forever altered by the shadow of this tragic event. Elizabeth's family, while devastated, found strength in their grief. They became advocates for child safety and mental health awareness, determined to prevent other families from experiencing the same pain. Community members rallied around them, offering support and solidarity in the face of unimaginable loss. The local schools implemented new programs to address mental health issues among students, recognizing the importance of early intervention and support. The tragedy also sparked broader discussions about the signs of mental illness and the need for better resources for troubled youth. Vigils and memorials were held in Elizabeth's honor, with the community coming together to remember the bright and loving girl they had lost. Her memory became a beacon of hope and resilience, inspiring efforts to create a safer and more compassionate world. Through the pain and sorrow, the St. Martin's community found ways to heal and grow stronger. Elizabeth's legacy lived on in the hearts of those who knew her, reminding everyone of the importance of love, kindness, and vigilance. Elizabeth Olton's story is a heartbreaking reminder of the potential for tragedy in our world. It teaches us the importance of vigilance, compassion, and community support. Let us honor Elizabeth's memory by looking out for one another and striving to create a safer world for our children. As we reflect on the events that took Elizabeth's life, let us also remember the bright and loving spirit she embodied. Elizabeth was a cherished daughter, sister, and friend whose joy and kindness touched many lives. Her legacy is one of love, resilience, and the enduring power of community. Thank you for watching. If this story touched you, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more stories that matter. Together we can make 